I just want to be alone. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to such smoke, it does not give you like an instant sickness. A long time before you realize, you know, it's eating up everything in your body. Air pollution remains Ghana's number one environmental risk to public health. It is responsible for about 8% of total annual mortality. The economic cost associated with air pollution is estimated at 2.5 billion US dollars, which is about 4.2% of Ghana's gross domestic product. Urbanization is real and we cannot run away from it. So we need to embrace it, take the positives and address the, the challenges that comes with urbanization. One of it is that because the quality of air uh, is not visible, it appears to be a silent killer. And in Ghana, thousands of premature deaths can be associated with poor air quality. There's increasing scientific evidence that poor air quality is associated with heart diseases, stroke, lung diseases, including lung cancers, chronic coughs, asthma, and even more recently, the coronavirus disease outcomes. Major sources of air pollution in the Greater Accra region in particular are industrial sites, vehicular movements, waste sites and domestic activities. As part of Ghana's efforts to address the environmental challenges such as air pollution, the Environmental Protection Agency EPA, was established. Environmental Protection Agency is mandated to co-manage the environmental quality of our country and then also to ensure that uh, we achieve sustainable development through environmental cleanliness. EPA has a role to ensure good air quality in the country and we started monitoring this and along the line we started having problems with equipment and then we needed to seek support and the data that we were collecting were every six days so it was not reliable for reporting. To address existing monitoring and planning gaps and to strengthen the capacity of the Environmental Protection Agency in the fight against air pollution, the Pollution Management and Environmental Health Program was initiated with the support of the World Bank and funding from key donors like the governments of Norway, Germany and United Kingdom. Pollution Management and Environmental Health Program is a, basically a project that is funded by several donors through a trust fund, which the World Bank manages. It's uh, an air quality management pilot that was uh, identified uh, to intervene in uh, seven cities globally, and Ghana is one of them that was selected. So the project uh, has several objectives. The first one is uh, really to build capacity of those cities to more adequately measure air pollution. Also in the process, uh, better able to identify those sources of, uh, of air pollution. And finally, to, once you have this uh, information, also identify actions and financing uh, mechanisms to help fund programs that would alleviate the air pollution. The World Bank, through the Pollution Management and Environmental Health Program, has really impacted positively on the functions of EPA particularly in the areas of uh, skilled development. That's capacity building. At the end of the day, you want to influence behavior. You want to influence policy. You want to influence um, the monitoring systems. And that's what this project helps us to do. The World Bank project has helped the EPA to come out with the air quality management plan, where it's supposed to be a guide for all of us in our interventions within the city center. Indeed, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly had worked closely with the Environmental Protection Agency in the drafting and implementation of that document. My work basically involves 
the collection of data and transforming the data into an information to help decision makers, policy makers, and those who educate the general public. So with this training, I now know about a lot of tools that I can use to analyze data in order to bring out information to influence decisions and stuff like that. The training has empowered me to be more confident in whatever I do. It has given me additional knowledge in how things are being done right under air quality monitoring. It has also given me the knowledge in how to communicate the data in a more meaningful way to inform the public about the health implication of air quality and air pollution. With this new state-of-the-art equipment that we have, we're able to get minute by minute and continuous data. It's more reliable and more accurate and similar to what we have in developed countries. We now have a database that describes the air quality situation in the country. So it makes it easier for decision makers with that information to be able to come up with policies to combat air pollution. We also have the data that can be transformed into something we call air quality index, which we can use to educate the general public on the air pollution situation in the country. Apart from the Environmental Protection Agency, the University of Ghana also benefited directly from the Pollution Management and Environmental Health Program. I have been doing some work in air pollution health and the difficulty always has been how to get the message down to people who need information. So this program helped me to get the actual language to transfer the results to the layperson on the streets. I teach environmental health and air pollution is part of the course I teach. I was able to also teach the students how to communicate air pollution information to the layperson on the streets so that they can also make informed decisions. With this state-of-the-art equipment, we are able to collect data that are of quality. And then also with this equipment, we can associate with hospital records to understand the various health impacts. We can also be able to make use of the satellite data, which is available from NASA. And in areas where we do not have these monitors, using the satellite data that have data across the sub-region and even across the country, we are able to then model and find out what is the level of pollution even in other places where we do not have this state-of-the-art equipment. The kind of cutting edge equipment installed under the project has not only enhanced data monitoring in terms of quality, but has also helped put Ghana on the international map. They are state-of-the-art equipment and they have put Ghana on the map of countries that now have federal reference monitors. And we foresee that even other countries would now want to come to Ghana to learn how these equipments are beneficial and how this equipment can help them to also improve the quality of air in their localities. Even though it's a pilot, is meant to, to build the foundations for us to be able to reach out to other cities in Ghana. The lessons learned from this project will give us uh, an insight as to what sort of thing we have to do when we want to implement similar ones in the major cities in the country. Even though the implementation of the project experienced some challenges, key among which is the global COVID-19 pandemic. Innovative methods were used to resolve such challenges, creating new opportunities in the process. The project experienced some challenges due to the COVID, which affected delivery. For example, a lot of our training was supposed to be in person. However, with COVID, we had to make some changes and be able to do the training virtually and achieve the same results. This also gave EPA the opportunity to be able to be hands-on 
with a lot of the things that they were supposed to do and be able to be part of that process, which to a large extent will be sustainable because they have been part of that process. To ensure that the outcomes of the pollution management and environmental health program are sustainable, stakeholders identified some key recommendations. Several lessons and recommendations. The first one really has been to enable us to better access the institutional capacity and how we can improve that. Another one is we've been able to identify opportunities both for financing for these kind of activities but as well as opportunities to do things differently. For instance, modern ways of cooking to prevent people from cutting trees but use more environmental friendly solutions. We would like to make the following key recommendations. One is the need to improve enforcement of air quality guidelines and regulations in Ghana. Two, the need to develop an air quality management policy for Ghana. And also the need to finalize the air quality management plan for the Greater Accra Metropolitan Area. Again, there is a need to transition from biomass fuel to LPG, which is more sustainable in terms of our environment. Again, the need to provide sustainable financing for air quality management and to mainstream air quality planning for government activities as well as private sector. It is estimated that in 2015, about 2,800 lives were lost in the greater Accra region because of air pollution. This number is projected to increase to approximately 4,600 by 2030 if no action is taken to reduce current and projected future levels of air pollution. Considering the enormity of the challenges posed by air pollution, a lot more work remains to be done, especially in the area of behavioral change. There's a sense of urgency here. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves, and uh, we at the World Bank, we are very much uh, concerned and uh, very much uh, into supporting Ghana and the rest of the world in this fight. So my message really is that everybody, uh, every stakeholder, private, public, uh, institutional, we should really get come together and continue to support Ghana in, in this area. We have seen that human activity on daily basis is related to the quality of air around us. This means that we all have diverse roles to play to promote good air quality including advocacy and increasing awareness on the importance of air quality, but also behavioral change. The public should be aware that there, there's a crisis of air quality in our country and that we should desist from actions that result in air pollution, particularly burning of waste in the system. That idea that I don't have money, I have to burn it. At the end of the day, you spend more money. Because if you burn it, you are the first recipient. You are close to the source of burning. So you inhale it first. It travels to, the, to your neighbors. We also bear it. At the end of the day, it costs the whole nation. This is a time for us to change and to embrace the environment. And by so doing, improve on the quality of air that we breathe. It is the air that gives us life. Let's stop polluting the environment. Let's stop polluting the air get quality air and to prolong our life. That is the best way we can also ensure posterity and sustainability.